Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to take what you did, and with this understanding, with this uh, kind of this backdrop, let's go turn your product that you played out and brainstormed, right? And let's go turn that into an offer. And I want to walk through a, few, uh, a, a formula that I created. Um, at first, it was not Xavier. It was, the last letter was a um, F for fast action bonus. <laughs> and I was talking to Jim Edwards. He's like, change it to an R, and then it'd be Xavier. I was like, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's how, that's how it came about. So this is how the whole Xavier thing came about. There is a part of the offer that is blue, that is prolific, represents the blue ocean. And this part should never come from a customer, should never come from the market. The market doesn't know that it needs this, right? Henry Ford, if I were listen to people, I'm gonna get a faster, right? They wouldn't ask for a car. It's the exact same thing with like so many of these amazing things that are out there. No one would have known to ask Steve Jobs for a touchscreen phone. Right? And so the premonition that I can go in and I can just simply gather all data from the market by default will not make you a prolific offer because they don't know what to ask for. So you still get to have, that's why we do the Play-Doh thing. I get to go to the playground zone. I get to go to the crazy zone. I get to come up with stuff that no one's ever seen. And in that blend between the mundane and the crazy is prolific. That's where I get to put this in these first few things. So there'd be a couple things right here where I get to be in the playground. Zone. So all the stuff you've created so far, or the thing that you created uh, with Play-Doh, put that up at the top, okay? Now, <clears throat> oh, <laughs> I forgot I was there. Hey, exhibit A, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> now the next part of the offer is stuff that we're gonna go and toss in that people, <sighs> what happens when you go and you try to sell someone your stuff? What happens in their head? Objections, right? Why do they have objections? Isn't your thing good? Safety enough because they've been screwed in the past, right? Maybe there's, there's people, right? But th th those are all, that's all viable, right? And there's like freakouts that happen every single time. Your brain's primary re uh, responsibility is to keep you safe. And something new and exciting, new, exciting, different, freaks the brain out and says, whoa, I've never seen that before. Whoa, that guy's got big eyeballs, probably a scammer, <laughs> right? But that's what happens. And people, because they start freaking out. So what we need to do is we have to have a part of the offer that also answers those objections. We have to have a part of the offer that responds as reactionary, red, red reactionary, to the knee-jerk reaction things that they say to, to themselves. Okay, when I was doing, um, actually, yeah, when I was doing door-to-door, -door, I'd go and this is my pitch, Okay. And we always stand off to the side. Ryan, coach me if I'm not doing it right. <laughs> we stand off to the side, acting like we're not there or whatever, it's cool or whatever, you know. And then they'd open the door, be like, uh, can I help you? And we'd say, hey, what's going on? We're just, uh, you know, we're, we're spraying the Larson's on the street. Um, since the truck is here, it's like half of our cost just to get it here. So it's 50% off while we're here. It's four or five o'clock, okay, for you today? This is the pitch, we get straight to it. And they usually would go, excuse me? <laughs> so we Sorry, we're here, we're spraying the, I'd say the exact same thing. Spraying the Larsons, truck's here, half off, it's four or five o'clock okay today. And then what we're trying to get them to say is, how much is it? And the moment they say, how much is it? That's a buying question and the script changes. Until that, everything was about getting them to ask that question. But the moment I said, hey, it's pest control, what do you think some of the objections are people give about pest control? No. Is it safe, right? A lot of the ladies asked that, which they just did. Okay, next, what, what else? No. Was that? Does it smell? Absolutely. What else? How long will it take? How long will it take? Does it work? Does it work? Is it safe around pets? Is it safe around pets? Will it actually kill the pests? What's that? What makes you think I need that? What makes you think I need that? Well, like flies everywhere. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> that would happen. Right? That would happen like crazy. Right? And so what we're going to do is I need to keep track of these knee-jerk reactions. There's a reason I got to be a, a good door-to-door um, uh, -door guy and then later a telemarketer is because what I do is I keep track of all the objections. And do you think there's any chance at all that people start asking the same things over and over? Yeah. Totally, right? So then you have like four or five or six of the same objections you're constantly getting. So why don't I go and I add those types of things in my offer that I know they're likely to ask anyway. So they'd be like, what's up, how you doing? And then I'd be like, asked for the four or five, four, four or five, okay, uh, okay today. And they'd say, um, uh, well, how much is it? I'm like, well, it kind of depends. How big is your house? And I just start walking away, trying to get them out of their door, change the selling environment, right? And then uh, they'd come walking out of the house. 
And we'd start looking at the eaves. Oh, that was a nasty, crappy eaves. Look at you. Holy smokes. Right. And we start going through and figuring out stuff. And I get to a final price and there's like a second round of objections, right? It's like, okay, oh, that's the price. Now, what do you think people say when they see price? To get you away. Got to talk to spouse. Huge one. I totally get it. You know what? I would need to talk to my spouse also, but your wife probably doesn't like the bugs either, right? Let's like make you the hero today. You need some brownie points? Come on, let's just do this, right? (laughs) Debit or credit. That's what I do. And there was a portion of guys that would just be like, okay, I need the brownie points. Like, yeah, let's make you the hero, son. Oh, get it, right? (laughs) And then there was a portion though of guys that, what would they say? No, I really need to talk to my spouse. Okay, so there's a percentage of people that that's all they need to hear is a reason. They don't care what it is. And there's a percentage of people, which is usually a lot more, who are like, you know, I really need to do talk to my spouse. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I totally get it. I was just messing with you, you know. So, (laughs) but that's what happens inside the brain when we see something that's new. And if you really are creating something new and prolific, you also have to have a zone that addresses the things in the brain that is the knee-jerk reaction. Just get off my doorstep, right? I gotta talk to my spouse. Is it safe for my kids? What if I lick it, (laughs) right? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) So that's why why I created it this way. And that's why the offer is in that manner. (laughs) What's that? Did somebody say what if I lick it? What if you lick it? Uh, Yeah. You get all kinds of weird crap, you know? It's, it's, anyway, it's part of the neighborhoods I was in too sometimes. So it's it's like, (laughs) the police. Anyway, so. Um, what I want to do though, is I want to make sure that the, so objections are usually categorized in a certain order. And then I was going to go through this more in the sales message piece, but you have to have this in the offer. This is why you make the message and the offer at the same time, because they influence each other heavily. I don't know what to put in here until I know what objections they're going to be having. So that one of the greatest gifts you could ever give to your business is to start tracking why people don't buy. So make a huge list of it, meaning you've pitched them. And why did they still not go purchase? Make a big list because there's something in there that did not convince them. There's something in there. If you really did make something awesome, you owe it to your message to be very loud about it and very convincing. So you're gonna go out and you're gonna start saying, um, uh, what are all these different objections people are gonna go toss out at me? And so there's a few things I do with that. So anyways, I'm, I'm, let me keep explaining the Xavier model here though. I'm gonna keep going here. I'm getting excited, getting a little head. All right. <laughs> Um, Ryan Levesque says, discover exactly what your customers want to buy. Have anyone ever read the book, Ask? Great book. <laughs> I think I said that about every book that I brought up. <laughs> Terrible book. I'll switch it up somehow. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Throw some variety in there. Okay, book. <clears throat> but inside this, though, the book, Ask, basically says, look, if you want to know what to sell people, this is, again, that Tony Robbins also says, find a hot market, ask them what they want, and then give it to them. What's the problem with that? You're going straight to the red. You literally can't do anything blue and prolific and something that's never been seen before. All right, you you literally, anyway. uh, Steve Jobs also said, um, um, you can't just ask people what they want. By the time you make it, they're gonna want something different, (sighs) right? So there's this, there's this give and take. That's what I'm trying to illustrate here with this. When you create these offers, this is one of the reasons why my offers do so well is because there's this zone that's sacred that I am not going to accept any market feedback in at all. It's the Play-Doh zone. It's the crazy zone. It's where I've got this vision. It's amazing. And I'm still getting feedback from the market on how to adjust it, but they're not going to say what it is because that's, that's my entrepreneurial vision, right? That's my entrepreneurial problem solving brain that's out in the prolific zone. But what I'm going to do next though, in the reactionary phase is once I get that in front of them, take note of all the reasons they're making fun of it. Here you go, right? That's why you don't look at your thing. You watch the eyes. Why'd you react like that? Why'd you react like that? Why'd you react like that? Now you might go back and change things in the blue and in the actual Play-Doh offer or Play-Doh product, but you also might just go address what their thing is in the red inside those other three pieces. Does this make sense? Okay, <clears throat> cool. Now the final part and piece of this, uh, there's a reason why there's six here and we'll get to it in just a moment. Uh, it's the reason to act now. We, I'm actually going to build scarcity and urgency into the offer right there, okay? Um, you also could add other things in there that add value, but I love this quote. No one does anything without a little urgency and scarcity. <laughs> Super good quote though. Um, okay, so this is my core offer formula. 
And uh, there's six here, and it represents, um, represents everything I was just going through right here. This is basically it. So it, X, X is what you want to sell. A is what they want to buy. It's not always the same thing, right? In the Funnel Hacks webinar, what is it that ClickFunnels wanted to sell? ClickFunnels. But what is it that actually they wanted to buy, the customers wanted to buy? Funnel Hacks. You see how that works? They want funnel hacks because it'll give them click funnels. They want funnel hacks because of all the bonuses they're going to get. I could go get click funnels at clickfunnels.com right now. I want funnel hacks. I'm like, cool. What I really want you to buy is click funnels. Make sense? So these two things here, that's the relationship between them. X is what you want to sell. A, I also call it the anchor. That's why it's A. The anchor of the offer is what they want to buy. Oh, I really want this funnel hacks thing. Um, um, sometimes they'll be switched back and forth, by the way, also. Um, so for example, like, uh, like when you're doing the Funnel Builder Secrets webinar, um, what do you want to sell? Like, I want to sell Funnel Builder Secrets. They're going to pre-buy a year's worth of ClickFunnels. What do they really want to buy in that offer? <coughs> ClickFunnels, right? If I took ClickFunnels out, it's the anchor of the whole offer. It actually devalues the rest of it if that's not part of it. Make sense? There's always going to be that thing inside your offer where they're like, I did that too? What is the anchor of OfferLab? The funnel build, right? If that wasn't part of it, it would just kind of be like a coaching program. Make sense? Yeah. So let's forget product for a second or solution. Yeah. What I actually want to sell is a result. Sure. How do I put that into a product as an X? Yeah. So you want to sell a result uh, instead of a product, we actually just treat it the exact same. And it actually comes from the sales message. So the reason why we do this is because now I know I have a vehicle-based bonus or vehicle-based value, internal-based value, external-based value. Now I know what's, that I need to tell a story about that vehicle, internal and external, in my sales message so that when they see it, they value it. That's why we do it this way and you make them at the exact same time. We'll get there in just a moment. So I want to show you guys how this all works. Um, but if, let me keep going, and if it doesn't answer the question, let me know, because that's very key. You're not just adding stuff, and when you're telling your sales message, you're not just telling stories. They're actually influencing one another, and one sells and sets up the other. Okay, so now what we do is we have, now Envision here, you've gone in and you've shown your brand new prolific thing that no one's ever seen. Oh my gosh, it's so cool, it's amazing. And they've gone in and they've had all their knee-jerk reaction objections. No, oh, spouse, right? Payment plan, does it work? Can I like it, right? And they go in and they've got, you've gone in and you've identified the top three. What is the biggest vehicle-based objection? What's the vehicle? What, is it, what does that mean? Product. product itself, right? And you even said, what if they ask, does it even work? Then that, that's a vehicle-based objection. Does it even work? Well, well, yes, it does. In fact, we've got this extra cool little uh, bottle that we're going to hand over to you so that if you see any extras over the next month, you can just spray them right there on your own, right? That'd be extra little bugs, <laughs> little tiny nuggets running around, <laughs> right? Does that make sense, though? I'm going to add a vehicle-based objection product when they see the vehicle, but does it actually work? It does. In fact, right, Russell, I don't know how to go build these funnels. Don't worry about it. We have some pre-built ones for you. That's a vehicle-based bonus. Make sense? Internal. Um, what, what does internal mean? Yeah, very ability-based, right? I don't know how to. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. It's very internal-based. They're in this order because it's usually the order, the, way, the order that the brain deals with them. That's why they're in this order. Um, very behavioral psychology-esque uh, to put inside this. So first, does it work? But can I do it? Do I have the resources to pull this off? That's external. And that's kind of the way that the sentence runs. Does, is that even going to work in general? Do I think that that pest control has the capacity to do what you're saying it does? I do. Oh, cool. Could I also pull that off? Or you're saying I just have to leave the house for just a little bit? Is there a contract? External. Right? And it's in that order. And a lot of times when I'm live, or especially in one funnel way, I mean, because I've done one funnel way, pretty much all of you, <laughs> what I'm doing in the comments is this. And it's what most people don't know. When people write in and they say, but Stephen, how am I going to get traffic for this? What kind of objection is that? 
external resources. Now I know I categorize in a snapshot the objections that are coming in, and I have a big bucket full of stories. I'm like, oh, I've got some great external stories. Okay, grab that one, sweet. Let's shoot that one. Okay, that's, that's how it works. We do the same thing in a sales message. Um, when somebody is in one funnel way and they're like, oh man, Steve, I'm so nervous to publish. I just don't think I can do it. What kind is that? Internal. 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 It's ability-based. Sweet. Oh, I got some great ability-based stories plus a little yelling. Going to go long the way. Here we go. <laughs> right? And that's how it works. And you have to understand that all decision-making, not just buying, is like this. And we say, can I do, or is that possible? Is it possible for me? Do I have the resources to pull that off? I think it could work. I think it could work for me, but man, it's just not a good time in my life right now. We got them so far. We got them two-thirds the way sold. They got stuck on the last third external. Make sense? Are you guys getting this? I'm just trying to fire off a lot of examples because you need to see that the sales message is part of the offer. It actually is what helps influence the things in there. And I need to go in and I need to keep a big list of the objections that I hear people say when they see this top part, the blue, and it influences directly what I put in my bonuses. So this is what I go create for, um, I mean, anything. We do it at the bottom, the middle, and the top. It's every offer that I put out there. Actually, when I'm doing a podcast, um, this is running through my head as well. I'm going to present a principle. I'm going to envision the biggest heckler in the audience, which is what I do. What would the biggest heckler, naysayer, jerk in the audience, as if I was on stage, what would they say about this? And I envision it. And then I shoot off a vehicle, internal, external story as if I was, uh, that was my rebuttal. <laughs> okay, that's what happens. That's, that's what I do in my, anyway, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. Okay, but that's, that's basically uh, how, I, how I run that. All righty. So we're going to go do this. Sound good? You guys good? Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. It's 8.15, we're good to go? Yes. Oh, it's 8.40. Wow, that went fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more piece after this and I'll be done. I don't want to kill you guys, okay? But what I want you to do real fast is take the thing, the Play-Doh thing, the, the solution that you've been brainstorming, and then go through and think, become the best heckler, the best heckler you can possibly envision. Why does your thing, like, poke holes? We call it black cat, right? Poke the holes, where are the holes in it, why won't it work, and become a huge heckler, start writing out those objections. We'll use those for the sales message and then start brainstorming ways to go in and, and solve that. Oh, Russell, I don't know how to write the email. Don't worry about it. We got this thing called Seinfeld Secrets. It's gonna help you write all your emails. Oh, Russell, man, I don't know how to send traffic. I know I need the funnel. I'm sold on the funnel, but I don't know how to get traffic. External objection. Don't worry about it. We're gonna give you this thing called Traffic Secrets. It's gonna show you how to actually create all your traffic and send nonstop traffic to it. Does that make sense? And the flow of the, of the sale itself. Cool. All right, let's spend just a few minutes here doing this, and uh, then I got one last part about the message, and then we'll call it quits. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs>